So obviously this video is going to be a little bit more complicated than just a very straightforward answer and, and thesis type of deal. But I do kind of answer the question. So I think you should definitely watch it. The clickbait was, uh, was still valid. So I've been gaming since about the age of seven. Um, when my parents got my brother and I uh, PS3, this was the year it came out in 2006. And uh, I've got to tell you, it was the start of something new. I basically fell in love from day one with, with gaming. The game that actually came in the bundle for the PS3 was uh, the OG Motorstorm. Uh, naturally, I sucked absolute donkey dick at the video game, but you could probably guess all by yourself that this did not matter in the s fucking slightest. Um, it was Christmas Day. New York City was covered in a decent amount of snow. Not too crazy. Nothing like it is where I live now. Um, and we just got this crazy, cool, brand new video game console. Um, before having a PS3, I basically watched my brother... Uh, play games on like the family PC and uh, I dabbled in some browser tomfoolery like mini clip and shit like that uh, but this Christmas gift ended up manifesting an insane passion for video games um, that has continued to this day or so I thought obviously that's a bit of hyperbole I did not suddenly lose my passion for gaming, nor did it really dwindle. And uh, here's why I think that is. First of all, for context, many others have pointed out that gaming just isn't the same as what it used to be. Uh, people are questioning why they're not really having fun with games, or at least not as frequently as they used to. Some people have diagnosed the root cause as, well, games are just not as good as they used to be. And that is just flat out insanity. Look at Solar Ash, Kenna Bridge of Spirits, Valheim, It Takes Two, Psychonauts 2, Deathloop, Cyberpunk 2077, Yakuza Like a Dragon, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Remastered, Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Ori and the Will of Wisp, The Last of Us Part 2, Valorant, Half-Life Alex, Animal Crossing, New Horizons, Hades, blah, blah, blah. All of these games came out in the last two years. Uh, in case you haven't noticed, they did this in the middle of a pandemic. And these were all bangers. They did good game while chaos and tragedy. This is very important. Now, I have a couple potential reasons as to why there are moments in which a lot of people around my age feel frustration at potentially a lack of joy that they're getting from gaming. And uh, I figured I'd make a video highlighting and going in depth into a couple of those. Uh, the first thing I want to talk about is saturation. At least for me, when I made the switch from console to PC and ultimately Steam, the amount of exposure I started getting to different games increased like literally eightfold, ninefold, maybe even tenfold. Not quantifiable in a precise way, but you get the point. It was nuts. Through stuff like Humble Bundles, Humble Monthly, all the fucking Steam sales where you can literally buy the entire catalog for like six pesos and a couple of green beans. Like, it's a lot like 50 cent games i have not like you know 50 cent in ps in the ps2 game where 50 cent made a gta of himself i have more than 500 games in my steam library accumulated over like 10 years now i remember counting the ps3 games i had at one point soon before i got my gaming pc and the number was like 30 and that felt like a lot. That 30 games was a, a lot. Like, about 30 fucking cases, PS3 cases stacked on top of each other. I feel like, of course, the acceleration of the internet and the amount of content put on it definitely contributed to that. You were, again, just more information, more exposed to the things you like. It's, it's, it's what the internet is good for. It makes a decent amount of sense. You have a bigger variety and choice, and a lot of those games turn out to be pure fucking dog shit, naturally. It just feels like you end up disappointed more often than not, or just a little bit bored. Maybe this wasn't absolute dog shit, but two hours, I, I thought I was gonna love this game. I played it for two hours. It seemed like it had a lot of potential, and all of a sudden, boom. Maybe something like not enough content, like a flip switches, basically. Not enough content. Uh, the content now has gotten repetitive. The gameplay has gotten repetitive. There's no new dimensions to explore. A lot of games that, you know, don't have stories, but focus on like collection and looting and, and survival. Um, there's this game I played recently called Drake Hollow. And uh, I really wanted to love that game and play it for hours and hours on end. I played like for four hours and I was like, eh. 
I don't know, man. This is getting kind of tedious and like repetitive. It's there. There's a spectrum of games from you know good, amazing to dog shit. But you know, you end up a little bit disappointed regardless. And uh, even if the amount of games you genuinely enjoy skyrocket as well, you know, you're, it's going to be overshadowed by a perceived increase in non-enjoyable experiences, uh, which kind of relates to the second point, and that is nostalgia. One way you fall into that rabbit hole of uh, video game despair, as dramatic as it sounds, where you're just all like, fuck man, there's nothing good to play, I'm not having fun, video games suck, uh, I'm gonna go be a, an accountant and then watch normie television when I get, get home, fuck this gaming shit, it's, it's not fun anymore, you know, even as a joke. One way you can fall into a rabbit hole of thinking in that way, in that vein, is through nostalgia. Uh, you constantly hear him, him older folk complain about this generation's whatever, you know, music, TV, media, uh, politics, etc. And uh, those feelings are not lost on even people around my age in our early 20s, especially get getting thrown into adult responsibilities more intensely in the middle of a pandemic. It's stressful. I miss the carelessness I had just a few months ago before I graduated from college when I wasn't having to worry about like making sure I stay on top of my bills and manage my finances and money so that I can live and not miss payments and shit and be comfortable and have enough to eat and go fucking shopping and get the things I it's 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 a lot okay it's, it's I'm, I'm, an, I'm a newbie at it all right I moved also a thousand miles away but regardless I feel like everyone falls into that nostalgia like man 2016 was so good it's so weird to me because like yeah, I know what they're talking about in 2016. Like, I know the music that came out that year and, like, the, the memes or whatever. But at the same time, it's also, like, this random year. Like, we are like, oh, shit was better in the 90s, man. Early 2000s. And now it's, like, 2014. Like, January 7th. Or, like, yo, fuck, man. The best time of my life was April 12th, 2015. I was eating a Snickers bar and... Then I went home. Like, people will fall into that, and I totally get it. It's 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 fun to reminisce. I, of course, I'm not above this shit. Are you kidding me? I love nostalgia. I love... I, jerks me off, dude. Nostalgia jerks me off. That's a weird fucking sentence. At the same time, people mistake their own emotions and their source. What you felt in the moment in 2015 is not the same as what you feel about it now. And you're upset that the things you're not playing now are not gonna ha don't have that glow and you think people would learn right like after f uh, every five-year cycle that this happens like you're 17 like oh i love miss middle school man minecraft just came out and then now you're like 22 23 and you're like fuck man i miss like senior year of high school i just fucked around and did nothing like yeah all those were great times in in, in a lot of people's lives and also very shitty times that on uh, other people's lives and for some reason the nostalgia kind of wipes away the reality for both groups of people and i think that ends up being the case with games like dude who thought fucking fortnite was gonna invoke that type of nostalgia for like kids who were like nine when that came out in 2017 it's been five years those kids are 14 now by the way like kids who are nine in 2017 are 14 now they're talking about oh my god the nostalgia so look it, it's something everyone falls into and you think you know maybe they shouldn't but they always do we always do to wrap up the point, I guess, try to think about that when you're, you know, you're reminiscing and having your moments of nostalgia and having that cloud your judgment of what's out there right now. Because pe I feel like people should still continue to look and seek out great new media and content. There's a lot of fucking good games out right now and that are coming out. And there are also those old games. Go play them. There are tons of emulators. Fucking do it. And there's the, the there's so many games, okay? People think that because a game came out in 2017, so it's not old enough to be considered like super nostalgia, but not new enough to be the latest thing, they can't play it. Bro, just play it. Like, I don't know, man. Gaming is supposed to be a fun hobby. Enjoy it. And if you don't, take a break. Fuck, man. I don't know. It is what it is. The third point in this video revolves around our attention spans being altered by social media and thus making it more difficult to concentrate and stick a game out if we don't get that very instant hit of satisfaction that scrolling through social media gives. 
And yes, I am aware that not the entire gaming community is heavily online and sp spends a lot of time on social media. However, according to this survey, 38% of video game players still come from the 18 to 34 age demographic. Uh, gaming is still a relatively young person's hobby. And according to this other survey, the younger you are, the more likely you are to use social media. 90% of the 18 to 29 age group uses social media. 30 to 49 is 82% and it keeps degree decreasing as you can see from this graph. So all this to say, it's not just conjecture to be like gamer, gamers are on social media and are online. Uh, I'm also gonna have to give a bit of a science background to, to, to this to really understand how attention is being degraded by social media. So if, you, if that type of thing bores you and you're not interested, that's fine, you can skip ahead. Fractional anisotropy, or FA, is a value that describes the degree of anisotropy of water molecules, that is, how freely they diffuse in any direction. This may be changed by the presence of things like macromolecules, cell membranes, etc. Um, and in white matter, the part of the brain that carries information from place to place, FA can be measured, and it allows us to, you know, get some information about uh, the alterations that are going on with the white matter, particularly its myelin structure. I'll put a link to learn more about everything I've talked about in detail uh, so far, if you're particularly interested, so you can look out for that. But um, a peer-reviewed study published in 2012 found that internet addiction disorder caused the reduction of this fractional anisotropy in major white matter pathways. So basically the reduction of um, the ability of water molecules to move freely resulted in abnormal white matter structure. Basically what is uh, responsible for carrying information from place to place is being uh, negatively affected because it's, its structure is being changed. So this would lead to behavioral impairments like emotional processing, decision making, attention, so just where this all comes together, impaired attention due to the physical changes happening to your brain when you consume a lot of social media and internet content could be one reason why games are just not as fun for some people anymore. Um, now, I know this study is talking about internet addiction disorder, which is more clinical than just, hey, I spend a lot of time online, but maybe these behavioral impairments are happening to a less insidious degree with the average chronically online person, but still negatively affecting our uh, attention. Again, to a lesser degree, but it's still, it, I feel like it's definitely still happening. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, say that this is fact, but that's a theory. Maybe there's some more uh, research to be found, but this is a YouTube video. So if you want to fucking shit on me and, and find a study that says, well, actually, if you don't have IAD, it's totally fine. Go ahead. But we're just fucking talking here. So with that attention being more withered, if you're having a particularly bad stretch with it, you may be quitting on games way too early. I've caught myself not feeling it after like 20 minutes of playing. Like there's just one the, a day where it's like, I have such little patience with whatever the fuck I'm doing right now. If it's not giving me that instant hit of dopamine, if I'm not feeling like instantly satisfied, I'll get bored very quickly. Now I'm not saying you have to wait 10 hours to get to the good part but perhaps we can be giving games more of a shot than we do because of that cross section of gamers that heavily use social media and are online. Again, everything I've talked about so far has been just my thoughts, just some theories, just some, some talking. Hopefully it makes sense to you. Hopefully you at least see where I'm coming from. If you don't, you can dislike the video. That's totally fine. But if you enjoyed this conversation, uh, like the video, it would be pretty cool. Uh, and subscribe for more content. I do a lot of gaming shit. I do a lot of random shit. It's, it's a good time. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Thanks for chilling. Thanks for hanging out. And as always, peace the fuck out. Bye-bye.